ladies and gentlemen, my name is Spencer Jackson, and I'm going to introduce to you this bay, the infamous plugins. So, first plugin to introduce for you today is the cellular automaton synth. So, here it is, you see the GUI in all its glory, and it is an automaton, which is basically something that acts of itself. Let me kill this video so we don't waste CPU cycles. We have plenty of spare though. So this, the whole center point of this synthesizer is this section here. This controls the automaton. Um, it's listed under cells because it's cellular automaton. Basically what it is, is there's some rule and you have a list of cells. So here in the output section, you see a list of cells and every uh, length period here, every cell lifetime measured in beats, the cells change state. So these cells are on a torus, meaning this end wraps around and influences this cell. And the rule dictates whether in the next state will these cells be alive, which is lit up, meaning they'll make sound, or will they be silent? Each of these cells make sound corresponding to one harmonic of the fundamental. So whatever note you play on the keyboard uh, is, has the harmonics here. The fundamental plays all the time. So this is the second harmonic, uh, or the octave, and then octave and a fifth, two octaves, etc., all the way up 16 harmonics. So here is the rule, and it's an uh, eight bit number and you can see, so this bit here corresponds, if no cells are alive, if three in a row, then the next state, the middle one, will not be alive uh, in the next state. So like these three here, this one is not alive. Uh, and then if the right side neighbor is alive, but the other two are not alive, the next state, it will be alive. So that's this cell here. Uh, etc. all the way through this. So if all three are alive, like this one, then the next state will be dead. So uh, what that gives us is kind of this uh, pulsating switching sound. So here's the default sound. Oh, that's very loud. Let me turn down the gain so we don't clip. Let's try that. So there you see, you can hear the states changing every beat. Um, and so in a host like Carla, I believe the default tempo is 120. So one beat is half a second. But, uh, this section here underneath the rule is the initial condition. And so you see you can change which cells are alive at the very when the note first starts. Um, maybe to illustrate it better, you can start it in the middle. So here you can see the state grows. And so if you change the rule, um, you get different effects. Um, that looks interesting. Of course, this synth is polyphonic. You can play uh, however, you can play up to 127 notes. And anyway, so you can you can get some interesting patterns. Oh, there's kind of a fun one. So the harmonics, so these are the cells, um, the cell lifetime, and here you're controlling how many harmonics sound, and so that's why it stopped playing there. Um, so there you see it's wrapping around. So if we get a little more, more harmonics going in there, um, you can 
could change this. Anyway, so that makes it a little bit more like, it's almost like opening and closing a filter. Um, so, cell lifetime can be very long, can be short, which makes for some fun. Anyway, uh, and then you can also change, this is using a sine wave for the fundamental, but you can also stack up so each harmonic is actually a sawtooth wave. Um, you can stack it up, you know, square waves, triangle waves, noise, and random. So, random's okay. Anyway, not as useful in the fundamental, but you do have those same waveforms in your modulation sections, which we'll get to in a minute. So up here you can change the channel, of course, and uh, master gain, we've touched already. So in each of these knobs, you can also set the value directly if you center click, use your scroll wheel and click. Um, so you can, if you're unhappy with the resolution, the dial gives you just enter in your own number and it goes in there. So here the harmonics, basically this affects the gain of these cells. If you do like the pulse, then that means each of these will sound uh, the same volume. So if we go back to this rule, If you go to saw, it's a little hard, a triangle will be more. So there you see the, the harmonics aren't quite as loud. Uh, you can change the number of harmonics up to 16. And then this one's kind of fun. This is the width. If it's actually changing the standard deviation. Each harmonic will be randomly assigned a detune amount when you play a note and so you can get metallic sort of sounds um, if we have a thicker patch so there you get that detune just having fun. Um, so in the envelope section we have an ADB SSR which is attack, uh, decay, break, point, so swell, <laughs> swell, sustain, and then release. So the break point basically determines how far it will decay. So instead of landing on the sustain point, it lands on the break point. So let's, let's get kind of a We'll make a very boring patch and do that. So just turned off the harmonics basically. And so that we can just hear some of the ABDSR going on. So there you go, very boring. Um, if we set the breakpoint very low, swell to uh, two seconds is good. So, so you'll hear it go to the attack and then come way down in the to the break point and then it will swell to the sustain point. So there you hear the swell. Um, there's no way to get that sort of effect in a normal ADSR when it doesn't have the break point. Um, might be a little more pronounced if we make that longer. Make the decay a little slower, not quite that slow. So there you see you can get a really sharp attack, sharp attack with, you know, that swelling back in, 
for some presents. Anyway, um, and then of course sustain, release, these all work about the same. You can also um, set the break point high to get kind of a really long, and then basically what it is is you have some there's a variation called a ADH SR and, and that's a hold time and that's effectively what you get when you set the breakpoint all the way up because it will stay at the maximum volume uh, as long as the decay period and then it will go down to the sustain point so <laughs> expected. Three seconds. It's always the worst when you uncover bugs in your tutorial thing, but that's going. Anyway. All right, so so after the envelope we have modulation. Um, we're back to the default patch. For whatever reason, I had some trouble, had to restart Carla. But uh, the modulation, you have your waveform, your frequency, and your gain. And the gain can go positive or negative, so like here in frequency modulation. Um, the reason for that is so that you can control the direction. So like here. Oh, let's add some gain. So if we make it a positive gain. Let's bring that back down a little. So you hear it goes up first, and if you make the gain negative, it goes down first. So it just gives you more control that way, and that's for AM or FM. Um, and of course we have... Reaching up, we reach up into the... Oh, sorry, it's probably clipping. But we get up into the audible frequencies for some nice FM. Um, that's not what I wanted. If we go back down, turn the gain way up, go to square. So, some fun there with the f modulation, you know, modulation tends to make patches much better. Um, and of course here is HAL 9000 watching your every move, making his own little plans autonomously. And uh, so if you click on him, he executes them and gives you a random patch, which is fun. There's so much there. there. The release times can go very long, up to 15 seconds. And so sometimes the patch it gives you is very long. But he likes noise. Turn down the release on these. Uh, noise ones are okay. There you go. There's a nice Space Odyssey type soundtrack for you. More noise.
the patches don't affect gain, so. Well. I might have to bias the randomness a little more so that it avoids too much noise. Anyway, so this is the cellular automaton, infamous cellular automaton, if I can say it right myself. Um, I hope you go out, check it out, and enjoy it. And it's nice to meet you, and have a wonderful day. We'll introduce the rest of the plugins another day.